Hello, this is Akram Jafar, and today I'm going to deal with picture tests and practical anatomy of the thorax. This video is about the mediastinum. You may use the video as a revision or as a self-assessment tool. For the purpose of self-assessment, pause the video and spend some time to read the question and come up with the answer. Replay the video to confirm your answer by listening to the comments and explanations. Identify the structure A and B. What is the fate of each? This is a dissection of the posterior mediastinum looked at from the right side. To be oriented, note the diaphragm on the right side. So this is the inferior aspect. You can see the phrenic nerve connected to the diaphragm coming from the neck. Also, you can see here the sympathetic trunk on the side of the vertebral column. The vertical vessel here that continues as an arch over the root of the right lung is the azygous vein. Note that it receives posterior intercostal veins. The tubal structure A that descends down and passes through the diaphragm is actually located behind the heart. The heart has been removed from the middle mediastinum, so as the pericardium. Note that A is a muscular tube, vertically oriented. It is surrounded by a plexus of nerves, partly derived from the vagus, which passes behind the lung root. This is the esophageal plexus of nerves. So A is the esophagus, and it's going to pass through the esophageal hiatus in the diaphragm at the level of T10 vertebra. To continue, as a very short segment, the abdominal esophagus. B is a small vertical vessel it's located slightly to the right of the midline, behind the esophagus, in close proximity to the azygous vein. It is the thoracic duct. It's the largest lymphatic vessel in the body, arises in the abdomen from the cisterna chile and passes through the aortic hiatus or opening of the diaphragm to ascend in the posterior mediastinum anterior to the vertebral column. In the superior mediastinum, the thoracic duct deviates to the left to open into the left venous angle after it joins the left jugular and left subclavian and left bronchomediastinal lymph trunks. Which vessels 1, 2, or 3 is the origin of the internal thoracic artery? Which chamber of the heart is located anterior to structure B? In this plastic model, 2 is the arch of the aorta, giving its first branch, the brachycephalic trunk, which divides into right common carotid and right subclavian artery. Then we have the other branch arising from the arch of the aorta is the left common carotid and the left subclavian artery 3. The internal thoracic arteries pass on either side of the sternum vertically down and they are branches of the subclavian artery. In this case, it is represented by 3. B is the esophagus. It is located in the posterior mediastinum. The left atrium, which is located at the base or posterior surface of the heart, lies in front of the esophagus and is separated from it by the oblique pericardial sinus. Hence, left atrial enlargement, for example in mitral stenosis, might indent a barium-filled esophagus in an oblique chest x-ray. Which of the tubal structures, 1, 2, or 3, continues into the posterior mediastinum? What are the circumscribed cut structures collectively called? This is a view of the mediastinum from the right side. Note the thoracic sympathetic trunk beaded by ganglia in the posterior thoracic wall. And you can see here the anterior thoracic wall. And this is the middle mediastinum containing the pericardium enclosing the heart. Tubal structure 1 is the superior vena cava, and you can see here that it receives the arch of the azygous vein. The superior vena cava terminates into the right atrium in the middle mediastinum and does not continue into the posterior mediastinum. 2 is the trachea, and you can tell by the tracheal cartilages in its wall. In addition, it is located in the front of the esophagus in the superior mediastinum. 3 is the esophagus, which is located posterior to the trachea in the superior mediastinum. And it is obvious that it is compressible and formed of a muscular wall. The trachea divides into right and left main bronchi at the level of the transverse thoracic plane that separates the superior and inferior mediastinum. Thus, it does not continue into the posterior part of the inferior mediastinum. On the other hand, the esophagus can be seen to continue into the posterior part of the inferior mediastinum. The esophagus is going to pass through the esophageal hiatus of the diaphragm. So, the tubal structure that continues into the posterior mediastinum is 3. The cut structures are formed of a bronchus, here it is the right main bronchus, giving off 
the upper lobe bronchus before entering the hilum of the right lung. This is not the situation on the left side. The left main bronchus divides after it enters the hilum of the lung, but on the right side, the upper lobe bronchus is given before the right main bronchus enters the hilum of the lung. You can see that the bronchus is located behind the pulmonary artery and in front of the artery and below are the openings of the pulmonary veins. These openings collectively are called the root of the lung and they pass through the hilum of the lung. In this coronal section of the thorax, identify the structures 1 and 2. What is the vertebral level of lines 3 and 4? In this coronal section, note the lungs and the structures forming the root of each lung. For example, you can see a main bronchus, right and left main bronchus, a right pulmonary artery and the left pulmonary artery. Since the section is coronal, then structures one and two, whose section appears to be circular, are thus directed anteroposteriorly. Each one of them forms an arch above the root of a lung. Vessel one, which is located on the right side, arches above the root of the right lung, and this is the arch of the azygous vein, on its way to open into the superior vena cava. Vessel two, that arches above the root of the left lung is obviously larger in size than one and is thicker in wall it is the arch of the aorta passing posterior and to the left in an x-ray it would produce what is termed the aortic knuckle on the left side of the cardiovascular silhouette line three is located at the level of the tracheal bifurcation you can see here this is the trachea and it is thus the transverse thoracic plane transverse thoracic plane passes through the sternal angle anteriorly and the intervertebral disc between t4 and t5 posteriorly so this is its vertebral level to determine the vertebral level of line four note the right dome of the diaphragm the left dome of the diaphragm and here's the region of the central tendon of the diaphragm the central tendon is located between the right dome and the left dome and as you can see here that it is penetrated by the inferior vena cava as the inferior vena cava leaves a groove in the liver the opening of the inferior vena cava and the central tendon of the diaphragm is located at the level of t8 vertebra which is the level of line 4 identify the structure a and identify the structure b what does it represent in the embryo this is a view of the superior mediastinum Note the arch of the aorta crossing from front to back and to the left. Inferior to the arch of the aorta, you can see the pulmonary trunk dividing into right and left pulmonary arteries. And also note the left vagus nerve crossing the arch of the aorta and continuing behind the root of the left lung represented here by the left pulmonary artery. The vagus gives rise to the left recurrent laryngeal nerve indicated by the arrow A and pulled by the metal probe. This nerve, the left recurrent laryngeal nerve, loops around the ligamentum arteriosum here, represented by B, and ascending up to provide innervation for the larynx, hence the name recurrent because it recurs, returns back laryngeal to the larynx. This nerve loops around the ligamentum arteriosum, indicated by B, and ascends after turning under the arch of the aorta to reach the larynx. The ligamentum arteriosum, B, is a fibrous cord between the arch of the aorta and the pulmonary trunk. It is the remnant of the ductus arteriosus in the embryo. The ductus arteriosus shunts the blood from the pulmonary trunk to the aorta and allows blood to bypass the lungs during development. Keep in mind that the lung is collapsed and no oxygenation takes place in the embryo. In addition, the blood reaching the pulmonary trunk from the right side of the heart is oxygenated because it is derived from the mother. The vessel ductus arteriosus closes soon after birth and forms the ligamentum arteriosum which is observed in the adult. Failure of closure results in patent ductus arteriosus. List two terminal branches of A. What is the root value of B? This is a view of the mediastinum from the left. In order to be oriented, note the posterior thoracic wall containing the sympathetic trunk, which is beaded by ganglia, the middle mediastinum containing the pericardium and enclosing the heart, and on the posterior surface of the anterior thoracic wall is the internal thoracic artery. This is a branch of the subclavian artery, which descends vertically on either side of the sternum to provide anterior intercostal arteries down to the sixth intercostal space, where it divides into two terminal branches, the superior epigastric and the musculophrenic arteries. 
Note the arch of the aorta here, crossing from front to back and to the left. Inferior to the arch of the aorta are the structures that form the roots of the left lung. Nerve B descends from the neck, passes in front of the roots of the lung in close proximity to the pericardium. You can see that there is another nerve descending from the neck, passes behind the root of the lung. This is the vagus nerve. But B is the phrenic nerve, passes in front of the root of the lung. The phrenic nerve is a branch of the cervical plexus from C3, 4, and 5, spinal nerves, mainly C4. It provides motor innervation for the diaphragm. The diaphragm is derived partly from the septum transversum. Initially, the septum transversum lies opposite cervical somites, and nerve components of the third, fourth, and fifth cervical segments of the spinal cord grow into the septum transversum. This explains why further expansion of the lungs and descent of the septum shifts the phrenic nerves that innervate the diaphragm from the neck down into the thorax.